Hello everyone, happy Monday afternoon. Uh, I was just gonna do a video, I'm like, no, let's just do a live, it's easier. And then I'll chop up a video from it. But if you have been following along, um, I have this cabinet here, which I'll show you in a second. And I had a very broken top, which I'm about to show you. Um, and I painted the inside and I just needed to put a new top on it, but I needed a jigsaw to cut the new top because I had curved corners. And that was about three months ago. That was just after we moved into the studio. And I had a brand new jigsaw that we brought when we were finishing off our laundry to, so that I could cut the bench to put the sink in. I haven't been able to find it since. So, just my husband seeing what I'm doing um <laughs> I just saw a shadow walk past um couldn't find the jigsaw and I didn't want to buy a new one because I just brought that one like it was brand new and I got sick of looking at this cupboard so I brought a jigsaw on the weekend I brought one from Aldi it's all right it's not as good as the Ryobi one which I had um but it did the job so <laughs> this cabinet is finally done and um, I'm up to staining the top of it. So I thought I would show you that because instead of just our traditional, sorry, that's the heater popping on. Um, instead of just the normal stain because we've got a painted finish or, well, yeah, a painted finish is normally what we're doing. Um, and it doesn't really have to match or anything like that. Today, we're actually going to, it doesn't have to be exact, but we're going to try and match our timber top, um, our stain, to the stain on the rest of the cabinet. And I'm going to show you. So, for starters, this was the original top which I pulled off it. So, this is all the pieces. Um, it was already broken. It had a big, this big crack here. I think it was. I don't know. It was one of them. And it was like, it had a massive crack and I couldn't leave it as is. It had to be replaced. Um, so, that's the original top. And whenever I pull tops off a piece, if I can... I try to salvage them so that I can use them as a template to cut a new top. It is the easiest way to do it. Um, so if you can, salvage your pieces, but put some tape on them or number them. Either way, if they come off in multiple pieces like this one did. Um, because then when you have your sheet of plywood, and mine for this top, I use a, um, this is the marine grade ply. Um, and I chose this, even though it's a little bit more expensive, I chose it because, except for the shoe print, it's got a really nice grain, which is what I wanted. I wanted a nice grain. When you go for the cheaper ply, a lot of the time the grain's very open, it's not super nice, whereas this has, um, has that really, really pretty grain, which we wanted. And I didn't want this, after all this work, and you'll see in a minute, um, I didn't want to go in with a really cheap ply. Yes, it saves me money, but the look's not the same and it wouldn't stain as well or look as nice. So I did choose a more expensive ply. We've taken our top. I popped it down, cut, uh, traced it, and then cut with my jigsaw for those who are not familiar with tools. This is, oops, ooh, this is a jigsaw. So this is the Aldi one. It was $29.99. It is a good saw. It does, it's got adjustable speeds, which I liked. It can also, the base of it rotates so you can cut on an angle. The only thing, and I should have grabbed them before I left this morning, is the blade's not great. It's like it did the job, but um, I think you'd be better going and purchasing yourself a set of nicer blades from Bunnings. Um, I think I paid about $30 for my set and um, they're much, much better quality. I get a much nicer cut. This didn't love cutting the plywood. I would hate to think what it would be like with a thicker timber, but that's my only advice. The cheap tool's fine, but definitely for things like blades and sandpaper, that sort of thing, sometimes it is better to spend a little bit more. Um, but yes, that's my jigsaw, and this is the cabinet. So let me show you what we're working with. It's an app. Oh, hang on. I'm just going to turn the camera around. That might be easier. It's a little Art Deco. Cabinet, curved sides, it's just gorgeous. So the inside was the same dark as the outside. Um, so I lightened it up. That has got pure eco silk finish in the colour fossil on the inside. Just to sort of pop it out a little bit. 
The old Bakelite handle was broken, so I have put a new one on it. Just using the um, existing holes as well, so it is a little bit lopsided. Um, but it's such a beautiful piece, and I love how it's come up. But this is now our top. So this is the new piece that I popped on. I've nailed it and then filled it. Um, you can see where it cut. It did sort of chip it a little bit, so I have filled that as well. And then I've also, with my sander, just ever so slightly... I don't know how well you can see that. Um, just curved it just a little bit so it wasn't such a sharp edge. The original top, this is the top. The original top had, I don't know how well you can see that. Come on, Facebook, work for me. It's got a slight curve to it as well. And this is some sort of ply as well or a very similar piece of timber. It's probably, it's not ply, but you get what I mean. Um, whereas the ply, you can see like the different layers and then the veneer on top. Um, so that's where we're at. And now we're going to match the stain. It's not going to be 100%. As you can see, there's a lot of different timbers here. Uh, and when they use a lot of different timbers, um, they pick a darker stain because it hides, it is more likely to hide the massive variations in colour. So one timber here could be really, really red. Another one might be really light. Like this door is pine, so it's going to be a similar colour to this, whereas this could have been like a mahogany or something like that. I doubt it was, but... Or that bit there, I will say, that is a veneer. Veneer pretty much is always that curved bit. If you find a solid piece of timber that's curved, you're doing very well. Um, so they've done a dark stain, so we're just going to match it. It's not going to be 100%. It's never going to look 100%. But the rest of the cabinet is in such great shape that I didn't want to sort of destroy that finish that's on there. So we're going to... Get pretty close, and I've got Perico Stain and Glaze in the colour Sable and Sepia, which we're going to pop on the top. Um, we've got a little bit here as well that I need to clean up with the stain. So I thought, let's do this and show you something a bit different. It's like the same, same, but a little bit different to normal, uh, which is always nice to see something a little bit different. So I've got... Sepia, I've got a tiny little drop of this left. Um, I'm only using it because sepia is a little bit lighter than sable. I think sable by itself will be too dark. And then I've got uh, my jar of sable. My jar of sable does not have a label on it, but this is stain and glaze. So this is a water-based stain. I only ever use water-based stains. Even if I have to go and buy a stain from Buddings for whatever reason, I only ever buy it water-based. Um, give your stains a really good shake and make sure you've got everything on hand before you go. Now this um, ply is obviously, it's it's raw. Um, so it's going to, and I always find ply soaks in the stain really, really quickly. So to help prevent that, let me bring you in. Hang on, I'm going to bring you up and tilt you down. <laughs> oh, sorry, too far. <laughs> My thing's broken and it gets a bit crazy at times. Right, that's pretty good, I think. So, we've got our sable. A sponge. Now, my sponge is wet. I actually used it a few minutes ago for a top coat. But it's been washed and it's nice. It's, like, wet enough to make my hands wet. If I, like, wipe it over my hand, my arm, my skin feels wet. Um, I've got a spray bottle. This is the Mr. Bottle. These are back in stock. They're on our website. And then I've got my sepia as well, which I'm also going to crack open. And I'm actually going to, um, just to sort of stop the wood from full on just drinking in that stain the minute I put it on there, I'm going to spritz down my timber just a little bit. And it's just going to stop, it's going to drink in some of that water and help prevent my stain from just drinking in. So just like that, not a massive amount, just enough to make it a little bit moist. Um, I'm going to start with our sable. This is just the lid of it. And we're not, we're really not going to use a lot, I don't think. Uh, here we go. So you're just going to wipe it on, same as any other stain. And this stain will also fill in or cover up that filler as well that I've had to put on here. So I use sable quite a lot when I'm restoring. It's such a nice color and it's fantastic for 
hiding any little imperfections in your finish as well because it's just dark enough. When you've got a piece like this, you've got a little nick or a scratch, it's just dark enough to um, hide it and but not be like super obvious either that you have used it on the piece. Um, it's my little secret weapon. So I'm just making sure I get those edges as well. And I'm not fussed about getting it on the actual edges of the top either. Uh, that will help blend it together rather than just using it on the piece. So I'm just sort of going to take it around there. It's not a massive amount and we are going to wipe that down quite a bit as well. And we're just going to keep working this in. As I said, this is not going to be perfect. I'm also going to get that back edge as well, just so it all looks nice and even. Like so. And now I'm going to come in with a little bit of my sepia. I'm actually going to just turn my sponge over. These are all water-based, so you can get it off your hands really easy. And I'm just going to wipe a little bit of that sepia on there. The sepia's almost got like a um a little bit more of a like a ready tone to it as well which i think will go quite well and i think what i'm also going to grab let's wipe this on i'm going to give this a second to sort of dry for a minute i've got another stain here and i think i just want a little bit more red to this as well it's pretty good but I definitely think we need just a touch more red. So give me two seconds. Um, Pure Eco Stain Glaze in the colour Cranberry, which is a bright red. I thought that would be nice, but um, I don't have one open. I don't want to open a jar because it's only going to be a little bit. So I've actually got this Kabot stain. This is a water-based stain in the colour Cedar, which is like a reddy, orangey red colour. Oh, hang on, that's not going to open that. Let me find a screwdriver. <laughs> um... It's like a, it's like a really dark, gritty tone. It's quite nice when it's mixed with sable. I've used it a few times now. When I just need a little bit, just just like a really little bit. It looks really dark in the tin, but it's got just that little bit of red to it, and it's quite nice when you need that bit of depth. So I'm just gonna pop a little bit on my sponge and wipe that over as well. There we go. Can you see how it's only a slight difference, but it's just enough to bring in a little bit of red because we're trying to get as close as what we can to the original colour without being like too, like it, as close as possible with what we've got is what we're trying to say, is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just, this is such a tiny, tiny drop. See how that's just warmed it up just a little bit and added that tiny touch of red? Is just enough to bring out those tones that was on the rest of the piece. I like very, very rarely. This is the only other branded stain that I've got. Um, I've only got the Pure Eco stains, but every now and then, I just want this tiny little patch of red. 
Um, if I'm doing like a lot of orange pine pieces that I'm selling as is, sometimes it's nice to have this on hand as well. So I'm just gonna sort of wipe that over those edges as well, same as the stain and glaze, just to make sure that's all pulled together nicely. And I don't wanna see any of that um, really light colored timber coming through either. That looks really nice actually, I'm really happy with that. So you can see it's just enough to bring it together. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not looking for perfect. It is a rest restored piece. I'm just putting a little bit more there just on top of that bit of filler. Now what I'll do is I'm just gonna grab a little bit of our um, sable on my sponge. And just sort of, I'm not doing it over like every single section. It's just enough to sort of add a little bit of variation as well. And I know you guys probably can't see most of this, but believe me, it makes a difference. Look at that. All right. Now I've got just a baby wipe here. I'm just very gently going to wipe over these edges. I don't want to remove everything that I've added. But I just want to make sure there's no like really big pile of stain on that edge. And I'll grab the camera again in a second and show you where we're at. I think that's really nice actually. I'm quite happy with that. Okay. I am super, super happy with that. So that little bit of cedar stain was just enough to add a little bit more depth to it. The sable's beautiful, but it's really a chocolate brown. Um, whereas that cedar stain has got just a tiny touch of, um, sorry, I'm just gonna show you, a tiny touch of red, which I think it needed. So here's our cabinet. Let me open the door so I've got a bit more light. There we go, right. So there's our beautiful cabinet, our coloring. I'll come in. Look how close that match is. So I'll wait for this to dry and then I'm going to touch this little bit up there. It's just the bit of the filler hasn't quite taken. But I think that's a really, really close match. It's enough that it looks like it was always there. I will hemp oil over it as well, which as we know will help bring out the grain a little bit more, help make it that little bit more vibrant and sort of tune in with the rest of the piece as well. But I think, like, it's a pretty close match. It's enough that it looks like it was always there. Just for reference, this is the original. Oh, which, oh, hang on. Do I have a piece of the original with more of the stain on it? Let me grab a different piece. I did actually, I started sanding it, and then I realized it was cracked. So some of it sanded really, really well. Other pieces are not. So this is the original varnish. Let me just wipe the dust off. Original varnish, new var oh, hang on, else if I show you. Let me lay that there for a second. Pretty close match. What do you reckon? Like it. it's pretty, it's pretty close on. Obviously the original has a little bit of a gloss to it. Probably had a top coat on it. I'm not gonna top coat it, I am gonna hemp oil it. But that coloring wise, I think it's pretty close and it's an, we will absolutely get away with it. Um, so a nice little restoration. I just thought this was something different to show you all. I know I show um, a lot of like the painter pieces like the sideboard over there with the stain on top, which is fantastic. But when you're doing something like this, it's a little bit different. And this is why we have colors like Sable in the range because they're so good for the restoration. Um, so I'm very, very happy with that. So I'm going to let it dry. It won't take long to dry anyway. Then I'm just going to touch up just along this edge just a little bit. I'm gonna grab a little brush and touch that up just to blend it in a little bit more so it's not quite as obvious. And then I'll oil it a bit later, um, probably tomorrow, because it is four o'clock, so it is home time. But I think that looks really, really nice. So that was Pure Eco Stain and Glaze. That was 
sepia. This is a horrible looking jar. Um, <laughs> there we go. Stain and glaze in sepia. Sable was our dark chocolate brown. And then the red that I used was Cabot's in the cedar color, which, and I'll show you just the cedar color as well. Come down here. This is a set. It's a like tall boy and then two bedside tables that my husband um, picked up in Melbourne last week. Um, the tops were like, it's in really good condition, but the tops um, had major damage. So I sanded them back and I've actually used that cedar stain on here. It's almost an exact match for the original color. And then I've just popped two coats of the satin, um, satin finish from the Pure Eco range as well on there. So, and that's the cedar color. So the, um, we don't have a color this close in the Pure Eco range. I have suggested to LJ it would be a great color to have, but we'll have to wait and see. Oh, sorry, Facebook. I don't know if Facebook tells you when I've rotated the phone and it's telling me off, but so this is, there's a lot going on in here. I've got more furniture on its way. Um, so that was the satin finish on top of that one that I was just talking about, the top coat that I've pulled on. Um, I've got the satin, gloss, and matte in stock. I've still got a couple of these. I've dropped all of these to like 10 bucks. These are transfers. There's a Sea Life one. There's a no. There's two Christmas ones there actually. Um, and then this one's really cute as well. So these are all on clearance. Um, so the stains, Sable. I am out of sepia. I will be getting more in. I think next week. I've just got to pay rent, and then I can do it. The other stain I was trying, seeing if I had a open one off, was the cranberry which would have done the same job. Obviously, it's a lot brighter. I probably would have mixed it with some of the sable, but that would do the job as well. Um, alternatively, if you don't have the stain, you could use um, paint as well. So, for example, you could use uh, red, red wine in the Mint by Michelle range. You could even use Michelle's lipstick and you just mix it with your stain and create a custom colour. You might need to add a little bit of water to it as well. Um, you could use Firebird uh, Cranberry, which is also a paint colour, not just a stain colour, or Rosewood would work really well as well. So just some other alternatives if you don't have um, a, like a red stain and you're looking to um, do a little bit of restoration as well. All right, I think that's it. Um our clearance on our website, we've still got some art supplies. These all need to go. Uh, so I'm actually going to jump online now and I'm going to drop the price and I'm going to mark them down probably another 30-ish percent. So they're all going to be, or well, they're already at cost. So they're going to be below cost. Um, so jump online now and grab those. We've got all of this clearance as well. We've still got some cards, some tags got candles, um, the diffusers, these are all made by me. Um, if you don't start buying them, I think I'm just going to have to start packing them into your orders as a little thank you gift because I don't know what else to do with them. And then I found another box of wax and um, jars at home on the weekend. So I think everyone's just going to get a free candle for a while possibly. <laughs> See how keen I get. All right, that's it for me. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope this, this was educational and that you learned something um a little bit different to what we've been doing of late uh, i have been asked if i would do some more restoration style videos as well so i'm definitely going to do that i'm not a professional when it comes to restoration i'm still very much learning but it is something that i am very passionate about i love the painting side of things but i do love a restoration um and it's something like my tiktok feeds all restorations that's all i watch um, I bet it's something that I'm learning a lot of. So, um, yeah, that's it. Thank you all for joining me again. Um, as always, I'll make sure this goes up on my YouTube and I'll do a little short, uh, little screen grab from this as well. So you can see what we've been up to. Um, our next project I think is going, oh, is going to be this little one here. Oops, hang on. Ooh, this one here, this little dresser. I think that's going to be next. As soon as I've finished this one tomorrow and that set of um, the tall boy and that, 
this will be next. So I've just got to finish sanding it and then we're going to do a paint wash, but we're going to do um, a lighter color. The other day we did the Brumby, um, the Brumby, I think that was Brumby as well, wasn't it? I'm sure it was, and the Brumby on that. So we've done a darker paint wash, but I've had a lot ask if I would do a lighter paint wash live as well. So I'm going to be doing that on this one. I think it's the perfect candidate for it, which I'm very excited by. Um, all right, that's enough chatting. Have a lovely Monday afternoon, and I will see you all at some point this week. Um, we are open all week this week. Next week, we'll have two days that we're closed. I think it's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, I think. I'm not 100% sure yet. But we are open all week this week as normal. Um, come and see us or jump online, shop online. Our website, we're... We're not like perfectly well stocked with the Purico in particular. We're still still playing catch up, but we are pretty well stocked at the moment. Um, we've got like we've got most of the white. We've got plenty of carbon. Um, we've got a few of the greens, etc. As well, that uh, we seem to run out of quite a lot. So they are there. They are online. Jump online and buy them. Bye everyone. Have a lovely afternoon.